the next stage of this is going to be talking about the just the physical things as far as getting the engine into the car um, and what kind of parts you can use and the things you have to do to make that happen. So let's get into that. Okay, first let's start with the main thing. Getting it in the car is going to be the mounts. So with the Z-Series engine, you can actually just use standard case watt mounts. These are innovatives. Everything's going to be complete. Just a bolt on affair. Didn't have to modify anything. You can see how uh, everything lines up. Side mount to rear mount. Let's go over this mount. Thing lines up perfect. And of course, with the K-Series swaps, this goes without saying, you have to get rid of the standard mount. You have to cut that off. And that's what this plate does is replace that piece. But, you know, that's pretty easy to do. Okay, let's get to the transmission. This one is a five-speed out of an RSX base. So anyway, you use a standard, uh, like I said, this is a five-speed. You use your standard K-Series transmissions, five-speed, six-speed, whatever. Standard clutch, flywheel. Five-speed, six-speed, it don't matter as long as the clutch and flywheel are the same as far as five-speed or six because they're not interchangeable as far as I understand, if I can remember correctly. Um, other than that, uh, again, since you're using a standard transmission, standard cable is going to work. Use a standard shifter box. In the car, i got an RSX box in here. i got some um, hybrid racing uh, cables in here. Really nothing too complicated there. I'll give you a look at it. Okay, like I said, standard slave with an off-the-shelf line, off-the-shelf swap uh, cables, uh, just a standard transmission. This is a five-speed. I have put in a LSD, uh, a Type R LSD into it, since these are all uh, open diff, because I plan on um, doing a little racing with the car eventually. At the speed I'm moving with this project, it'll probably be never. As far as the driveline goes, I almost forgot this is another big issue people always ask me about, is the axles. Now, these are, again, I bought these cheap, like a hundred bucks. They're uh, trap shaft shop. I think they're stage O, stage one, something, I don't know. Brand new in the box. Anyway, got these off a guy. So your standard swap harnesses will fit, I meant swap harnesses, swap axles will fit no problem. The only thing you have to remember is you cannot use the Z-Series half shaft. You have to use a standard K-Series uh, half shaft. This is an A2 one. Um, if I remember correctly, it's pretty much, it bolts right on and fits perfect with the swap axles. There is one difference. I think you have to cut one of the ears off of the intermediate shaft. Um, so it's been a long time since I've done the swap. So let me look, let me compare the one we got. And I've got one on the floor over there that's uncut. So let's see what the differences are. Okay, I found the stock uh, um, half shaft here. So let's look at the differences. Okay, this is a factory non-modified one. So it appears I didn't have to do anything to the top of it. Now the bottom, you got two bolt holes here. Now this one you can retain. You have to trim. You have to trim this one right here. So you're only going to be able to uh, use two bolts. And that is due to the clearance uh, with the oil filter housing being at the bottom. I don't see that as an issue. It's a really simple uh, fix, and I don't think it really. Just gonna weaken it uh, any substantial amount. Okay, let's get into the next uh, thing here. Okay, so at this point, you should have the engine in and uh, should have everything ready to go as far as the drive line goes and as far as physically getting the engine uh, bolted in. Okay, so next, let's talk about uh, some of the accessories with it. Okay, again, just using the standard K series rail, standard injectors, um, just made these lines that are pro classic with the aftermarket fuel pressure regulator. I'm using a return feed and return uh, converted the factory lines I've cut and flared them with a 37 degree flare tool to accept AN. I just got a small filter there. Okay so I'm using a standard K-swap uh, alternator. A standard just K-series starter. Um, now, my engine didn't come with the accessories. Uh, I'm not running power steering. I did. It already had the uh, the tensioner here and the idler pulley, the crank pulley, water pump. It had that stuff on. I just put the uh, I bought the alternator on. So with that being said, I did not. I know in some case swaps you have to buy some like a power steering delete or something of that nature. I really don't remember. But um, with this one, I didn't have to buy anything. Uh, I used. I found a belt that will work. 
The only difference is one one rib short. I could not find a full. Uh, I think this is a six rib. I could not find a seven rib in the right length. Um, I tried several different ones and could not find anything that would work. They're either too short or too long. So this is going to be the belt you're going to have to use. So take that number down. Okay, so that pretty much solves the accessory problem. Let's go over the cooling on this car. Um, so I'm using a standard stay half size radiator that, of course, uh, I moved over to this side. I cut the uh, cut the spot webs off. This is a new radiator support because my car was had some damage. So I moved the uh, radiator mounts over. This is a cheap, got this off somebody for like 50 bucks. It's an old radiator, but anyway, it does the job. Got the uh, fan mount in the front for, for clearance. Um, these hoses are just standard swap hoses. Uh, can't remember if they're K20 or K24. I think there might be a little difference. I'm not sure. But I had to do a little cutting. Thanks. Um, it doesn't fit the best. It works for now. Um, later on I want to do something a little different here, but this was just to get the car running. This one I had to shorten a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but as you can see, everything needs to be cleaned up a little bit. I got some stuff just kind of blocked off here. Um, pretty much put the swap in here, got it running, and took a little break from the car. Pretty much got the swap in and got it running a couple years ago. I took a little break from the car from most of my projects, really. So here we are. Um, so. I think we have addressed we've addressed the physical stuff, accessories, drive line. Okay, I guess one of the one of the next things is going to be one of the main things uh, that a lot of people ask about, and that's going to be um, the electrical side of this. So thankfully we do have a uh, another engine just to look at, um, but let's get into that. Uh, that's what I've had the most questions about. I've seen videos of guys online that actually had the engine sitting in but no videos of them running other than mine, so, so let's talk about that. So let's talk, <laughs> so let's talk about that. Um, so what I did was, actually I had a K-Swap, another K-Swap car laying around the house that um, I, comp I wanted to, I done some comparison with. Uh, so I ended up buying a gas partner at RSX, so I ended up getting the wiring, the engine wiring harness from them, ended up getting a, uh, K Pro set up from them um, and a few other little things. Um, I wasn't sure if the K Pro was going to work due to the crank, ser the crank sensor differences. So, but anyway, I, I took the, uh, once I got the harness, I had this engine on the stand. Um, I hadn't put it in the car yet, so I took and started uh, putting things together and figured out that I can make pretty much almost the entire harness work unmodified. So, let's get into that. So, so let's just look. Just look at a lot of the placements of things on this Z series and then compare it to the A2. Okay, so a lot of your VTEC stuff is in the same spot. It's in the same spot here. Cam sensors. Same spot. Okay, so. So, in order to make the uh, A2 harness work with the Z series, what I had to do was. You can see these little tabs here, the little ridges. I think these are to ensure that you don't put the wrong plug on the wrong sensors. But the Z series, the plug was identical, the pins were identical. So, but these little uh, ridges were different. So what I had to do was on my Z series engine, I had to take a razor blade and I actually had to file some of the ridges off here. I can't remember exactly which ones or whatever, but and with doing that, I was able to put the cam sensors. Uh, plug an A2 harness directly into my Z series car, uh, no problem. I think the rest of the stuff was pretty well plug and play, like the VTEC stuff, um, this piece here, a uh, notch sensor. I think the rest of that was plug and play. Uh, if anything was a little different, it was nothing but shaving, uh, shaving some of the ridges off. Okay, now the big question here is, which everybody asks, is the crank sensor issue. So let's look at that. Okay, this is the crank sensor. Let's actually pull the um, the connector off on the Z series car and just kind of look and see how it compares to the A2. Okay, so I've got it unhooked. So let's see how it looks. So you got three pins. You got these uh, 
got three pins anytime we got these ridges in it. Right here on the side. Let's look at the Z. Let's look at the A2. Okay, now just from looking, I think I think this might be a little different. Like I said, I can't really remember. It's been a while. Luckily, my Z series engine. My Z series engine already had this piece hooked to the crank sensor. Now, originally there was it came up to about right here and then it had another plug in and that would plug to the main to the engine harness on the car. I choose this pigtail and cut it off and wired this in with the A2 harness. It was really simple. It wasn't nothing but, you know, just your power, your ground and your signal wire. So, really easy to plug in. I mean, really easy to wire in, just, you know, solder it in each ring. It's good to go. So like I said, everything's pretty much plug and play as far as the electrical part you goes. Uh, use the A2 harness on the Z-Series with a little bit of modifications. The main thing is going to be uh, grinding a few sensors um, and uh, extending the crank sensor wire. And you're going to have to have the pigtail off of the Z-Series crank sensor so that you can wire it into your A2 harness. Okay, guys, so that's going to do it for this part of the video. We've covered most of the aspects of it. Stick with us here. I'm going to get into the rest of it, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks.